I have helped over 800,000 players optimize their WoW setup to be the best player they can be. And as you can see on screen, I always get questions like, what the hell is your graphic settings? And why does your game mechanics look so much more obvious to see? And why is your gameplay buttery smooth? And here's the little known lesson I learned from playing WoW for 20 years. It's default graphic settings are holding you back. And yes, the default settings might be more immersive, but it's just not optimized for people who want to take World of Warcraft seriously or to improve at the game. In this video, I'll share my insider secrets, the lesser known tricks and visual hacks I've learned over two decades of playing WoW. Forget those generic use this, use that WoW setting videos. I'm taking it up a notch. I'll walk you through every single graphic settings. I'll explain in simple terms what each of them does. And I'll review the exact sweet spot to achieve buttery smooth frame per second while maximizing visual clarity on crucial game mechanics. This guy will start with two insane console command hacks that changed my game, followed by what I call the three kings and one prince of mechanics visual settings. These four things will ensure you never miss a single visual mechanic ever again. Then I'll cover every graphic setting. I will explain how they affect World of Warcraft. And for each of them, I'll tell you the exact sweet spot I found from 20 years of playing the game that will give you the best balance between eye candy and maximizing a buttery smooth frame per second. Before we start, we are less than 5% away from our 100,000 subscriber goal. This is a lifelong dream of mine, and if you like my content, all I ask is you subscribe to the channel. It costs you entirely nothing, but it means the world to me. So starting with the Zoom Hack Console command. If you are always taking damage from avoidable projectiles in World of Warcraft, you are probably playing on the default suboptimal zoom settings. You see, the default zoom setting handicaps you by forcing you to play with a more zoomed-in view. Now, what if I told you there's a way you can actually see the projectile traveling towards you way earlier? There's a little-known console command that gives you a 37% boost to how far you can zoom out. And this is a massive advantage because you can now see incoming harmful mechanics way earlier, allowing you to respond with the precision that you thought is only for the elite WoW players. This is extremely useful, especially if you are a short caller for your team in raids, M+, or PvP. Being able to see the whole fight from way above gives you a better understanding of what's going on in the big picture so you can better process more information at once and make better decisions and calls. But just to demo it in-game in real time, this currently on screen is the maximum I can zoom out. Default settings for WoW. The console command for the zoom hack is super simple. All you do is to enter a simple console command as per what I've shown on screen. I will even provide the command in the video description. So expand the description below for this video and you can just copy and paste it. So in your game, press enter, then control V to paste, or you can simply type it out, then press enter again. And now try zooming out using your hotkey. And now you can zoom out way further. And when you're playing from a top down view like that, you can actually see projectiles coming in way earlier. Because if I flip it back to the default settings for WoW, this is basically the field of view where you start seeing projectiles come in, where my mouse cursor is. It's at the first ridge of this bridge, right? If you use the 2.6 variable in my command, you can see projectiles come in as far as the third ridge on the bridge over here. And if you compare the values of 1.9 to 2.6, this workaround and hack gives you 37% more room to zoom out. Now there's another cool camera trick that goes very well with the above. It's another console command. You can type in what's on screen or simply copy and paste again from the description of this video and then try zooming in and out. It will make your camera zoom in and out way smoother than it previously was. But the bottom line is this zoom out command hack was a massive game changer for me, but that's not the only console command hackery I have for you. Now this next console command hack also caught me off guard when it was uncovered by the WoW community around the time of the Dragonflight launch. And as you can see from the comments on Reddit, it was a massive game changer for a lot of people, not just me. And I'll link to the Reddit thread in the description too. What the community uncovered was a console command that magically made everything in WoW pop with clarity and detail without any any noticeable reduction in FPS or game performance. Now, this console command hack is based off something called the Fidelity Super Resolution or FSR for short. The point of this function was to let people render graphics at a lower resolution, like 1080p for example, and then using data from the previous frame to build a higher resolution frame, 1440p for example. Naturally, this method is way more resource efficient to output 
versus rendering natively and directly at 1440p. Bottom line, this kind of rebuilding of a higher resolution frame does make the image a bit more blurry, and FSR was then used as a sharpening filter to make the rebuilt image way sharper. But in WoW, you can use this simple sharpening filter without even having the game output at a lower resolution to be scaled upwards. Now, if you didn't understand this logic, this you will understand, just see it for yourself. The first thing to do, pull up your menu in WoW, go to Options, and then you will find Graphic Settings on the bottom left over here. You want to scroll down on the tab, find Resample Quality, and under the drop-down, you want to select Fidelity FX Super Resolution or FSR for short, and then proceed to Close. Now, next, press Enter in your game, and then simply copy and paste what you see on screen or type it in and press Enter again. And you will notice the details here being way sharper. The best way to look at it is at the edges of items like this ruby over here. This is with the effect off. Notice the blurry edges over here and here. Now I'm going to turn it on right now and you can see it's way more distinct. So turn off and turn on. Another very obvious way to see, look at the patterns on the ground. This is currently with it off. If I turn it on, it looks way more distinct. As many people on Reddit have said, after entering this console command, it's as though you're putting on glasses designed for WoW. It makes your game look way better by adding more color and depth to the important parts that you can see. Now, going back to your graphic settings, know that you can change the strength of this filter effect by this slider over here called Resample Sharpness. I like it on 0.5, but if you really like the look of it, you can increase it all the way to zero, which is the maximum strength of this filter effect. And if you want to tone it down, you slide it to the left. But 0.5 is my favorite setting. It's entirely personal preference. All right, so that's the two quick console hacks. But this is where the real secret begins. Over the years, I've been asked countless times, why does my game look so smooth on screen? By the way, you can check the FPS counter on the bottom right. And why does it seem way easier to see and to react to game mechanics in my footage? And so today, I'm going to let you in on my secret to achieving that buttery smooth high FPS gameplay while keeping everything important like AOE, boss mechanics, projectiles super clear and easy to see. Now, the magic trick is knowing which graphic settings are crucial for clarity and contrast, allowing you to see and to react to the game mechanics better. It's also about identifying which settings are purely cosmetic and could slow you down in the department of frames per second, which is not a great idea during action-packed moments in raids, mythic plus dungeons, or PvP. This strategy is also used by the most competitive players across games like Counter-Strike or Valorant. Professional players who want to strike a balance between smooth gameplay and essential visual details, where they deprioritize the resource-consuming eye candy. And my strategy is similar in two parts. First, I max out specific settings that highlight vital game mechanics that helps me react faster. Then I adjust other settings to boost FPS and to minimize input lag, making the game feel more responsive and smooth to give me an advantage in character movement and reactions. Now, I'm not just going to tell you what settings to change. I'll talk about what each graphic settings does and why I chose that particular setting. That way you understand my reasonings and you can change the settings to match your PC specs if you like. And if you're playing WoW in 4K or with a GPU that is not powerful, these settings will help you get the most frames per second without sacrificing visual clarity for things like mechanics and things you need to react to. Naturally, if you have a very powerful rig, feel free to turn up everything to ultra. At the end of the day, enjoy the game how you want to enjoy it. I'm just saying these settings I use are meant to get the most juice out of your gameplay performance, regardless of what hardware you use. Your final graphic settings is subjective and it's up to you. Now, before we start, keep in mind that you're watching this video on YouTube at 60 frames per second, which is the highest frames per second YouTube allows. And that means you won't be able to tell the difference between my gameplay at 60 frames per second and at, let's say, 140 frames per second, because YouTube can only display that many frames within that time window. But for those of you with gaming monitors that shows frames per second way beyond 60 FPS, I guarantee you, you can feel it for sure. All right, now moving on to the three kings and one prince of graphic settings for maximum mechanical clarity. That might be cheesy to you, but hey, it works. There are three settings and I call them the three kings because they have the biggest impact in ensuring all gameplay mechanics you need to react to, like AOE, 
fires and swirlies on the ground are displayed as clear as they can be. Then there's a bonus fourth setting, which is also impactful, which I call the Prince. So let me explain all four settings and I'll show you a demo of the same encounter with these four settings tuned all the way up versus all the way down. And the difference is night and day. You can see it for yourself in the demo. So the three big settings or the three kings are as follows. Firstly, on the graphic settings menu, scroll down and locate something called particle density. On the graphic settings menu, just know that I always only configure using the base graphic quality. The rate and battleground, I actually have it unchecked. Now, if you want a different setting for base, which is like, for example, you are in town or when you are in dungeons versus a different setting when you're raid and battlegrounds, then go ahead and check this box, which means you can basically configure base out of raids and battlegrounds on a different graphical settings. But I see no point in that. So I have this unchecked and I always just rely on the base settings because this applies to everything in the game. So anyway, I want you to locate something called particle density. Put simply, this first setting determines how many bits and pieces you see during flashy moments in the game, such as when the boss spells are being cast, ground AOE is burning, or any similar effects that involve a lot of small moving details. Turning up this setting makes all important PvE mechanics you need to react to look intense, and hence way easier to spot. So always keep this on the highest possible setting. Then you have projected textures. This setting governs how the game shows detailed textures on the ground and other surfaces. Specifically, it allows you to see where the spells will hit, indicating where certain things will land, and indicating areas you should move to or avoid to stay in during combat. A simple example is those ground swirlies that indicate something will land there and you need to move out of it. You must always keep projected textures enabled. This is what makes glowing outlines of ground effects or the visual cues of a dangerous boss ability visible. If you have this disabled, you are going to be failing to dodge mechanics you can't even see. Always enable this. Then third, you have texture resolution. Now this setting determines how clear and detailed everything in the game looks. Lowering this setting results in everything starting to look blurrier and less defined. And this is why you always keep this on the maximum highest setting because it impacts gameplay mechanics directly. Specifically, the visual cues for spell effects, certain AOE ground effects you need to move into or out of during fights. A higher resolution makes the visual cues way more noticeable. You set this too low and you start missing out on game mechanics because somehow those pesky fires or bad puddles on the ground just seem to blend into the background. And frankly, this slider does not impact frames per second much at all, so crank it as high as you can. Now beyond the three kings, scroll down further and you'll find something called contrast. Now the game's default contrast is set at 50%, and you will notice as you increase the contrast to something like 75, 80%, which is what I like, and just to show you the drastic difference if I scroll all the way to the left and all the way to the right, and what you'll notice is that increasing the contrast, you'll see that the colors become way more distinct and they blend less together. And so this is very advantageous for fights where there are swirlies on the ground because you get a way bigger distinction between the edges of the swirlies versus the safe zones. So if you're trying to min-max, consider playing around 70%, 75% contrast depending on your tolerance for how dark certain parts of the world will become. All right, we've covered a lot of theory, but seeing is believing. This is a fight from Dragonflight Season 1, Halls of Valor, you guys might have remembered that. And just to demo to you, if I go to graphics settings, it literally is everything that we have covered. You can see particle density is disabled, texture resolution is low, projected textures is disabled, right? Now scroll through the settings, contrast is at 50%. I want you to note two things. Firstly, these spinning things on the ground. You can even barely see the edges of the AOE. And just look at these AOE. There's nothing on the ground other than the blades spinning, right? And then look at the drakes. Look at the drakes and the tornadoes that spawn, these white tornadoes. You can barely see the tornadoes. They are so faint, very faint. So just take it in for now, right? There's also supposed to be lightning on the ground as the drake flies by. Now let's literally go into the options and then let's toggle on the important stuff, specifically particle density to ultra, texture resolution to high, projected texture to enable, and contrast to 75%, 75% apply. Look at the difference immediately. You can see the AOEs of the blade that is super clear. Now we wait for the drakes. Look at what's happening with the drakes here. Firstly, you see lightning paths on the ground. And then the whirlwinds are so much more noticeable, right? Way easier to dodge. So that is what I mean. By turning on 
the three kings and the one prince in terms of the four settings, and I know it's cheesy, you can actually see things way better. There's no excuse not to see stuff now. Okay, so now let's talk about settings that will really save you frames per second. Remember, YouTube only displays 60 frames per second. So you can't see like the 140 frames that I'm getting the effect of that via YouTube. The only way you experience that is through a gaming monitor you own. And trust me, if you play a 140 FPS versus 60 FPS on a monitor, you will definitely feel the difference. Just ask any professional first person shooter player. So if you want a buttery smooth gameplay on your ultra high refresh rate monitor, these settings that I'm about to talk about will give you the most bang for your buck. Naturally, these means you forgo the eye candies for raw frames per second, but it really doesn't look that bad. Literally, what you saw in the Halls of Valor encounter, with all the four main settings turned on to the highest, that actually looked pretty alright, and it gave you such a great performance boost. But my goal in this section is to educate you on what each of the graphic settings really mean and what it impacts, so you can best decide for yourself what do you want. Depending on how powerful a gaming PC you have, you can then pick the right graphic settings that optimizes between frames per second, visual clarity or mechanics, or eye candy. Now keep in mind, WoW tends to be CPU bottleneck rather than GPU bottleneck. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the specs of your gaming PC. But let's start all the way at the top. You will see that my render scale over here is actually not at 100%, it's at 91%. Yours is probably at 100% by default. You see, render scale determines the resolution at which the game's 3D environment is rendered on your screen. When it's set to 100%, the game renders at your monitor's native resolution or your natural resolution. Lowering the render scale below 100%, reduces the resolution the game outputs, which decreases the workload on your system and it frees up more frames per second. So this is really a trade-off between graphic quality and performance, but since you already get the benefits of the fidelity super resolution that we talked about in the sharpening hack in the earlier part of this video, you can actually get away with as low as 90%, which is kind of what I use, without really being able to tell a noticeable difference. And yet, it already frees up 10% more resource. This is a significant FPS gain for older PCs. And then next, you have Vertical Sync. So this synchronizes your game's frame rate with your monitor's refresh rate. When enabled, it prevents screen tearing, a visual artifact that occurs when your monitor displays part of the multiple frames at once, resulting in a disjointed image. Now, typically, you want this disabled, as enabling it adds on to input lag, and it also decreases your frames per second. You only ever want to turn this on if you have serious screen tearing issues with your monitor. Now, if you don't know what screen tearing is, you probably do not have the problem, turn it off. The next setting, low latency mode. This refers to a feature introduced in Dragonfly expansion. It aims to reduce input latency, which is the delay between when you perform an action, like pressing a key or moving your mouse, versus when it's reflected in the game. This is also known as input lag that I talked about earlier. I can tell you that NVIDIA Reflex Plus Boost feels the most reactive for me personally, and I know other game developers like Riot Games and Valorant have been telling people to use NVIDIA Reflex Plus Boost where possible. But I also know online that some people saying that this feeling of improvement from using a setting like this comes from a placebo effect, meaning your mind is playing tricks on you. But test it for yourself. I did feel like it helps my character feel very slightly more responsive, and hey, every bit helps. Now moving down, you have anti-aliasing. This reduces the appearance of jagged edges, often seen on objects and characters, especially when playing at lower resolutions. So the higher your settings here, the cleaner and more natural edges in the game look, but of course, at the cost of performance and frame rates. So what's the sweet spot? Well, I found this setting to be the best for me without a noticeable drop in visual quality, yet better frame rates. You want to set your anti-aliasing to advanced, and then under image-based techniques, use CMAA2, which if you look at this dropdown, is not as good as FXAA high, but the performance is so drastically better for what I think is a slight decrease in quality. There's a very bang for buck trade here, and that's what I use. And then you have multi-sample techniques. I recommend going for Color 4X, Depth 4X. Again, it's not the highest setting, which is the 8X version, but I honestly cannot tell any difference. Without sticking my face onto the monitor and observing the pixel changing, I just can't tell the difference. And yet, between 4X and 8X, 4X definitely gave a noticeable frame rate improvement. Moving on, we have the multi-sample alpha test that you can check over here. This is a setting that determines how WoW evaluates the transparency of objects or textures. The short of it is this, when you enable it, meaning you check the checkbox, 
It evaluates the transparency at a more detailed level, which can result in smoother edges and textures. But save yourself the trouble, turn this off to save resources and frame rates. Again, another setting I cannot tell the difference unless I stick my face onto the monitor and observe the change in pixels. Then we have camera FOV. Okay, this is a big one. This controls your field of view or FOV and how much of the game world you can see at once on your screen. If you change the camera FOV, you are changing the angle at which the camera in the game displays the world. When you increase the FOV, you drag the slider to the right, your view gets bigger. You can see way more of the area around you. However, the game has to render more objects at once, which means you lose frames per second. But my view is that you should play with camera FOV at 90, because that way, along with the zoom hack that we covered at the start of the video, you can see way more. And let me just demonstrate. I have some friends who choose to play it at 80, and when I click apply, just look at how much more cropped in everything is right? This is 80, and then this is 90 without zooming in or out. It's just FOV. So if you see it from a top-down perspective, same zoom settings, by the way, this is 90 and this is 80. It's so much more cropped in. I recommend playing on 90 and just zooming all the way out like I did because you can just see way more like that. Look, at the end of the day, I have friends who play on FOV 80 and it's perfectly fine for them. So this is really personal choice. I prefer 90 though. Next up, we go into graphics quality and just to reiterate what I said earlier, I do not like to have separate settings for Raid and Battleground. Well, because this tab, if you check this box here, it means that you have separate graphics settings for Raid and Battleground, right? But what about Dungeons? And I do Mythic Plus, so I don't bother with this. I always use base, and this is the only graphic setting list that I have. I don't have a separate setting for Raid and Battleground. So for base, entering into graphics quality, I set everything to one because you will get to tweak and customize them individually anyway. Under shadow quality, this controls how detailed and realistic shadows are in the game. The higher the setting, the more obvious the little nuances are. For example, the specific shape of a tree's leaves on the ground or the subtle movement of your character's shadows. But at the end of the day, shadow does not play any role in game mechanics. So I definitely turn this down to maximize FPS. Then next you have liquid detail. It controls how water looks in the game. The higher the setting, the more realistic and appealing liquid looks in the game. For example, water reflections and ripples. This is 100% about the game's visual beauty and the zero game mechanics that is affected by this. Lower the setting to maximize FPS. Next, we have particle density, which is part of the big three that we covered earlier. Keep this on ultra. Next, we have SSAO. This stands for Screen Space Ambient Occlusion a feature in World of Warcraft that makes lighting in the game more realistic. Essentially, it adds depth to your scenes. It simulates the way light naturally shadows around objects. For example, the areas that are tight and enclosed will look darker, making the game world feel more three-dimensional and rich. But you know it, again, it does nothing to make mechanics stand out more. So lower this setting if you like to save yourself some FPS. Then you have depth effects. So this setting adjusts how some visual elements like light rays, sun shafts, sparkles, how they look in the game by adding depth to them. If you set it to high, the effects become more detailed and realistic. For example, light shining through the trees will look more natural and the fog will seem thicker and more enveloping. Again, this has zero use for you to react to mechanics. So disable this resource hog if you need those frames. And then next you have compute effects. This affects how certain visuals like the thick fog that seems to fill spaces with a cloud-like appearance and also other smoke-like particle effects are shown in the game. The higher the setting, the more realistic things are. For example, the in-game fog can look denser and more natural and the interactions of the particles with one another are more precise. But again, zero impact on how mechanics actually look. Another resource hog, so turn this off for more frames. Next, you have outline mode. This makes certain items or objectives easier to spot by adding a glowing outline around them. This is useful for things like quest items or gathering notes as they make them stand out. That said, when you're doing serious content, this setting does nothing for you in combat. So disable this for more FPS. Texture resolution, we covered it in the big three settings. For spell density, it controls how many spells you see during gameplay. It controls the visual clutter on your screen, especially when messy instance encounters like raids or battlegrounds are taking place. So when you set it to essential, the game only shows spells that are crucial for you to see, like your own spells. Setting it to everything means you will see every single spell cast by every single one in your raid or your dungeon which can be visually impressive, but it overwhelms your screen and it makes it very hard to track the critical mechanics you need to respond to. 
So set this to essential to not only maximize FPS, and it also keeps your screen clean. So the only spells or effects you need to see other than your own are the bosses or encounter mechanics, making it way more obvious to react to. Okay, next up we have view distance. This setting adjusts how far of the game world you can see at once. Setting this on high does let you see more buildings and characters from a distance, but at the expense of processing power and frames. So for WoW, game mechanics that you need to react to, they are always immediately in your vicinity. So seeing further does not give you an advantage. This is one of the biggest savers for frames if you lower it, so feel free to do so liberally. Environmental detail. It affects how much of the game's environment, like landscapes and trees, you can see at a distance. Turning this setting up makes the world look fuller in the distance, but it does nothing to help you deal with in-game mechanics. You can set to lowest to maximize FPS. Next up, ground clutter. It controls how much stuff you see on the ground, like grass, leaves, small plants, how far away you start seeing these details. On the high setting, the game looks more lush, due to more greenery and small ground detail. But just know that this does you no favor when it comes to dodging mechanics, especially ground effects. In fact, a lower setting not only grants you more frames per second, it makes ground AoE way easier to see, especially in outdoor encounters where there is vegetation. Then you have triple buffering. This is something you can check or uncheck. This is a setting that helps you smooth out sudden changes in the frame rates of the game. When you disable it, the game defaults to double buffering, which renders the next frame while displaying the current frame to you. Triple buffering, when you enable it, it adds yet another frame to the queue, resulting in a two-frame lag. This extra buffering can introduce a tiny delay between when you input a command and from when you see the results on the screen, which adds to input latency that we talked about earlier. Now, I am a min-maxer, so even if it's a one-frame lag, I still believe in disabling this to ensure my character is more responsive in reacting to my inputs to dodge mechanics. Scrolling down further, texture filtering. This affects how sharp and detailed textures appear, especially when viewed from an angle. So at maximum, the textures retain their sharpness and clarity even when you are looking at them from the side or from a distance. My take is that you comfortably can use it at 4x. That saves you frames and things still looks pretty good, so you don't have to go all the way up to 16x. 4x is great. Then you have the Ray Trace Shadow. Enhances the quality of shadows using advanced rendering techniques called Ray Tracing. This method creates shadows that are more realistic, they have softer edges, and they are more accurate. It also allows for shadows to be cast from additional light sources, so it adds depth and detail to the game's visuals. But it is an absolute FPS killer, so I always have this disabled. Again, there's no game mechanics that actually benefit from ray tracing, so disable this. Up next, you have ambient occlusion type, and you have a setting of some that you can select auto detect, and these two. Ambient occlusion is the concept in graphics where the overall lightness affecting a surface in the environment is diminished by the presence of other nearby surfaces. Those other surfaces will block or occlude some of the non-directional scattered light in the scene from reaching the affected surface. Okay, if it sounds complicated, just know that in the options, just pick Fidelity FX CA CAO. This is the newer ambient occlusion technique that was introduced to WoW, starting in the Shadowlands expansion. So in short, it gives you the same visual quality, but amongst all the options, it uses the least resource usage. So pick Fidelity CA CAO. Now, resample quality, we have already covered this during the sharpening hack part of this video. Leave this setting alone. Do not touch. Moving on to VRS mode, this is introduced in Dragonflight. And this feature controls the intensity of a feature called variable frame shading. It's designed to boost performance in modern day GPU by reducing the complexity of smaller shaded objects while allocating more processing power for more complex ones. Basically, if you enable it, VRS mode breaks on screen images down into blocks and then it decides their importance and saves processing power from shading unnecessary areas that the players can't see. Now, if you have access to this, you can keep it on standard, but if you're like me, you know, you have it disabled because you don't have access to it. Next up, you have physics interaction. It allows you to choose how much of the game's physics affect your character and other objects in the environment. Honestly, picking none has no impact on your ability to deal with game mechanics, so in the spirit of maximizing FPS, feel free to pick none like me. Now, if you scroll further down all the way to the bottom, you will see max foreground FPS, background FPS, target FPS. Max foreground FPS means that if you enable it, when the game is currently active as a window, what is the maximum FPS? In this case, it's kept at 60 FPS, and that's why at the bottom right over here, you see it's 60 FPS. The moment I uncheck it, you can see my frame rate spiking, 
all the way to about 140 FPS, which is what my monitor can basically display. Again, you're on YouTube. You can't see the difference between 60 FPS and 140 FPS because YouTube caps at 60 FPS. But that's the purpose of this function. And then there's a max background FPS, which means when you tab out, alternate tab out of WoW, what is the maximum frame rate you want WoW to be running on in the background? So you can set this to like 30, 20, 10, so that when you are tapped out of WoW watching Netflix or something, while it's running with 10 FPS in the background. So it saves resources. And then there's target FPS, which basically says you enable this option to dynamically reduce graphic quality if you fall below a specific frame rate. So basically if I check it and I'm below 60 FPS, while would dynamically adjust certain graphic settings to push me towards 60 FPS. But I've heard a lot of problems with this. People who have enabled it, sometimes you will notice a micro stutter. And that's really because your game is reconfiguring the graphic settings just to hit the target FPS. And there's a slight like stutter. It doesn't happen to everyone, but as you can see from the comments here, from the official WoW forums, this is a thing people have experienced. So I always have this toggled off if possible. And then we have resample sharpness that we covered earlier when we were talking about the sharpening filter and hack. And then contrast and brightness, we've also covered them in the earlier part of this video. Gamma is simply just how bright your game is. Again, personal preference. So let's do a demo. I will keep the three kings and one prince at its maximum setting and all the other settings that we have covered at its lowest to maximize frame rates. You see in the middle, this is the wild default FPS counter. And with a setup like that, I'm currently hovering around 140 frames per second. Again, a reminder to you, you can't see the 140 frames on YouTube. You can only see a maximum of 60 frames per second on YouTube. But if you have a gaming monitor, like I've said in this video, you can definitely tell the difference. That is why professional players insist they have high refresh rate monitors at official gaming tournaments. Now the game still looks pretty good. It has a burning fire, it has particle effects on the mobs, Things still look pretty good, but let's go and crank everything up to maximum now, right? I'll put everything to its maximum. And now it is at its best quality. Look at the frame rates that have dropped. It is easily hovering around 60 frames of decrease. Now remember, I'm playing at 1440p. Maybe some of you who play on 4K might even see a more drastic reduction. So resolution will matter. But the point is, you can save so much more frames per second just by applying all these settings I've covered while retaining the higher standards and bar for the Three Kings and the One Prince. If you found this video helpful, all I ask from you, hit the subscribe button. I am so very close to 100,000 subscribers. We are less than 5% away. It's my lifetime goal. Your subscription to you is entirely free, but it means everything to me. And if you have that one guilty or friend who's always getting hit by game mechanics, send this video to them. If this guide was a game changer, I have another video here that will be an absolute game changer for leveling up your WoW experience.